Okay, if that's going, then I'm going to get this thing going too. Okay. All right, everybody, welcome to our uh, virtual and real meeting. Um, I'll call to order. It's about 6.31 on Tuesday, April 21st. I'd like to acknowledge we're on Treaty 1 territory and the traditional homeland of the Métis people. Um, tonight, in order to accommodate physical distancing and to accommodate council members who have chosen to attend this meeting remotely via GoToMeetings, we welcome three councillors on the screen. Would you like to introduce yourself, Graham? Hello, I'm Graham Randall. Irwin. Microphone, Irwin. We need your microphone, Irwin. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Irwin, come to, coming to you from St. Andrews, where it's snowing. Yes, all right, thank you. And? Steve Axelby. Thank you, Steve. And? Mike Bartmanovich. Henny McMorris. And out of the camera range. No, you can see him. He's can we there. see Raymond? There he oh, is. Yeah. All right, oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Raymond Morrow. All right, so um, adoption of the agenda. We have a couple additions. Uh, we were going to add the Bell Mobility quote for 911 radios, add bylaw 1608 for the 2020 tax levy, and add a discussion on council meetings changing the time of day until COVID-19 is resolved. Um, may I have a mover and a seconder? So moved. Mike's moving it, or Graham seconding. Thank you. I'll second uh, So those are the adopted, or those are the changes. Is there any further discussion? No? Steve, okay. All right, all those in favor? One, two, three, four, five. Thank you. Moving on to the minutes of the April 7th, 2020 meeting that were circulated to all of council. Be it resolved that the minutes of the April 7th, 2020 regular council meeting be adopted as presented. A mover. Steve, seconder. Irwin. Irwin, thank you. Any discussion on the council minutes? No? Okay. All those in favor? Five hands. Thank you. This is really weird. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. We'll move on to uh, committee reports, as there are no delegations. So we'll start with Public Works. That's you, Graham? No, that's Mike. That's Mike. Yeah, Mike's Public Works. Mike's he's, Public he's, Works. He's Pardon public me. Buildings. Right. Public works. <clears throat> Thanks, Penny. Um, ongoing maintenance, preventative maintenance, uh, continues with the municipal equipment. And, and again, thank goodness we have our own mechanic in house now, yeah. uh, saving us a lot of time and uh, and uh, and money and keeping our equipment up and running. Uh, monthly water samples from the well at both the fire hall and the Albert Beach pump house are taken to Winnipeg on an ongoing basis to ensure the quality of the water that is available all year round. Um, before I move off, something else I just wanted to touch on, um, about a week ago or so, um, Public Works uh, was beginning the regular startup procedures for the water treatment plant for the upcoming season. One of those procedures uh, includes cleaning and disinfecting all reservoirs, uh, which includes uh, the raw water well, some people know it as the wet well. Well, this wet well is, is a holding well. Uh, raw lake water is pumped into this wet well and it's held in the well uh, and then fed from the well into the water treatment plant where it's processed and then contained again in a, in a, in a huge tank. Um, once the cleaning was, once the uh, cleaning and disinfecting was, was complete, um, because it's lake water, there's the possibility that there are zebra mussels in this lake water and therefore they could not be taken to the Alexander landfill and dumped into the lagoon because there is a, always a chance that uh, they may re-enter another surface water source. So therefore they had to get a, an aquatic invasive species permit 
from Agriculture and Resource Development under the Water Protection Act. And uh, this allowed them to transport the water that was used to flush out the wet well to the gravel pit on McCulley where they dug a hole and they disposed of the water uh, in the gravel pit. Now, again folks, um, uh, some people may have seen, some people report that they saw wastewater on the truck. This was lake water, nothing but lake water, and it was dumped in the gravel pit because of the potential of zebra mussel content, and it couldn't be moved to the lagoon in Alexander. So, um, it's situation normal, and uh, we're on pace to have the seasonal water up and running when, it's, when we're uh, ready to go. When it's warm enough. When it's warm enough. <laughs> and I have... Uh, I've come out to the cottage on May long weekends before with my golf clubs and woke up the next morning and saw six inches of snow on the ground. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for this year. Thank you, Mike. Finance, Erwin? I do not have a report. Uh, Lynn's been extremely busy with the financial plan and I was unable to receive the financial statements for March. So next month there'll be uh, two months of activity reporting on. All right, but you did receive the statements that we got in our council package, correct? Like the, the checks? Correct. And, the, correct. and no issues correct. with those? Um, well, we'll normally deal with those next on the accounts and finances. Okay. Or do you want to deal with the list of accounts now? Nope, that's fine. We can wait. Good point. Okay. Thank you. Uh, protective measures, fire and first responders. Steve, do you want this one? Uh, sure. Um, <clears throat> So there was, uh, there was a total of nine calls this month. Uh, seven of our calls were in the RM of Alexander. Five calls uh, were for a medical related issue. Uh, one call um, had the help lifting the person into Five Falls Ambulance. Uh, one call was for someone uh, that had to, uh, that had uh, lit a brush fire um, underneath, uh, on, along the uh, trail because of snow. Uh, there's no um, Just a reminder to everybody that if you're going to be uh, burning uh, any sort of brush, to be very careful that uh, you keep an eye on it. And then at the same time, um, also just remembering, that especially uh, when there's uh, when there's dry leaves uh, that are coming out because the snow is melting, uh, the snowmobiles do get hot, so they can uh, ignite a fire. Um, Furthermore, there's uh, in the, uh, the arm about uh, Victoria Beach, uh, there were two calls. One was of a medical nature. The other call was uh, for a person uh, that wasn't practicing safe distancing and pulling, uh, pulling each other around behind an ORV. Uh, the person being pulled behind fell off and hit their head uh, on the chunk of ice and was knocked out. Uh, they were able to uh, go out and bring them in and uh, there was no immediate sign of permanent injury to anybody. Um, the fire personnel are practicing uh, safe distancing and have discontinued any unnecessary meetings. Uh, they continue to maintain our, our equipment in preparation for any call uh, that they should have. Uh, our medical uh, unit is out uh, is out of service uh, due to concerns with COVID-19 uh, contamination. We only have uh, so many licensed medical responders and a couple of them uh, do have uh, respiratory issues. And uh, it would not be a good idea uh, or safe uh, for their health uh, to come into contact with persons with uh, the COVID-19 virus. Uh, the fire department will will attend any emergency if and when needed uh, with the remaining uh, license, uh, licensed medical responders we have. Um, it should also be uh, noted that the uh, the conditions are, um, are drying up a little bit here so that there is always that risk. And again, if you're going to be lighting any brush fires, um, just keep an eye on it and also don't. <laughs> Fun. Um, my understanding, Steve, thank you, is Brad has put a fire ban on. Mm, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't told with that, but I okay. might be wrong. Yeah. If, if you, if you heard that, then I'm sure that's okay. I think he was going to put the signage up today. So. Yeah, okay. it's for real. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good report. Okay. Um, police, Mike? Hey, well, um, I attended the April 14th, uh, police board meeting. Uh, with uh, with John and with 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 Gary, um, in the month of uh, we're we're still doing really really good. And again, my hats go off to uh, to our police force are really holding down the fort. We had uh, one alarm um, that turned out to be a false alarm. We had uh, four RCMP assists, uh, one bylaw infraction within the RM. We did have one dog complaint. Uh, folks, 
I'll remind you again, I've seen them, I hear them every night, the coyotes are around, don't let your pets run loose, please. Uh, 13 Highway Traffic Act infractions, and there were two counts of uh, suspicious activities uh, where, where people were, were, seemed to be up to no good, and they were uh, intercepted by, uh, by our fine police force. Um, just another note that we have two constables that are going to be starting a little bit early and they are going to be, uh, the, the hope is that they will be able to assist us uh, with uh, enforcing COVID-19 uh, protocols as laid out by the province of Manitoba. Um, for now, uh, health and safety wise, um, officers are not too bad, but anybody have any spare N95 uh, masks kicking around? Uh, flag down a cop and uh, offer them. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much. I don't have anything on special events. Golf course, back to you. Well, Graham and I... Oh, I, I was just to... oh. Sorry, oh. sorry, just Steve. I, that's good. I, I just wanted to point out one thing that uh, with Mike's report with the, uh, the police, the stats are just getting better and better uh, as we go forward. And uh, back when uh, we had originally considered to uh, bring on a uh, uh, another uh, officer, uh, temporary officer throughout the winter. There were, were some questions as, as to whether or not that was a good expenditure, but I think that the, uh, that these constant reports uh, showing that the stats are improving um, just goes to show that uh, it, it, it has been very beneficial to the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people know that there is a police presence in Victoria Beach, and that's okay. a good thing. Yeah, good point. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Mike and Graham on the golf course. Uh, well, Graham and I were uh, out on the course. It's still looking a little punky right now, so uh, I, I wouldn't be taking too many divots. Uh, but uh, uh, Graham is, is uh, busy lining up uh, tenders for work on the clubhouse. Uh, there is some work that has to happen sooner than later. In other words, it has to happen before the golf season really is in full swing because it affects the, uh, the inside of the, of the clubhouse itself. Um, of note as a non-essential service, unfortunately, the golf course uh, at this time cannot be opened. However, Carl and I uh, are sitting down and we are putting together plans for following whatever COVID protocols um, will be in place at the time that, uh, that the golf course is, uh, is permitted to open. So it won't be a surprise. We'll know what we're doing once we know that we can go ahead and open the course. Um, maintenance staff will, of course, still be hired for the season to ensure that the course doesn't go to seed uh, while it's closed. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be every golf course in the province or is it? Uh, uh, good question. Uh, this is this is for every golf course uh, in the province. Uh, they all fall under the same protocols. Uh, there is the Manitoba Professional Golf and Greenskeepers Association, I believe that's what it's called, that Carl belongs to, yeah. and a lot of the, and a lot of the good information that he gets comes directly from his association, mm -hmm. who uh, who who, uh, who uh, essentially liaise with uh, with the province and the uh, and the um, res perspect respective uh, parties right. to figure out just when and how golf courses can open this year. Because has anything come down from the province? Has it, I haven't heard anything you know, in one of the health directives, for instance, saying. Yeah, nothing. Specific. It, it 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 it's more of a list of, of exclusion. If okay. you're not on the list, you're you're uh, you are non-essential. Is essentially the way it seems to be working. Huh. Okay. Unfortunately. Yeah. Be a great stress reliever after a couple of years of uh, <laughs> yeah. of hibernation. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Any questions for Mike? No. Okay. Moving on to municipal building, buildings, Graham? Yes, uh, municipal buildings. Uh, just an overview of the uh, report that I uh, uh, submitted by email to council uh, recently. There's quite a number of buildings, and we're uh, are, uh, uh, moving along now that, uh, now that uh, uh, things have uh, thought out with uh, repairs and renovations uh, as required and, and as uh, reviewed and discussed in context of the uh, budget discussions recently. A uh, brief overview, uh, Raymond and I are working on uh, some of the necessary uh, safety issues associated with the uh, uh, move light in and then there'll be some uh, um, uh, electrical work. Uh, I'm uh, uh, dealing with that. As a matter of fact, I will be meeting tomorrow 
with uh, uh, Ben Peterson, who's uh, 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 looking, looking very good and says he says he feels great. So we'll be going over the details there. Um, the gig office building too soon to talk about, uh, and the cosmetic uh, uh, renovations in there are uh, uh, continuing and ongoing. The golf course, Mike has uh, mentioned, um, we had put together a, a very long and detailed and quite boring uh, report on all the things that need to be done at the golf course. And uh, we've got, fortunately, we were able to line up uh, uh, three different uh, bidders uh, to work on the whole package, which okay. is looking better than us engaging all the little individual subtrades, which would be uh, not very efficient. So. Uh, uh, we're looking for the most uh, cost-effective way, uh, cost-effective way to do it. Um, moving right along, uh, there's some stuff to be done on the ranch with the bakery, in conjunction with our commitment to the accessibility group, and the same goes for the VB store. Uh, within this VB store, there's an upgrade to some equipment and uh, and uh, machinery uh, that's been budgeted for and. Uh, uh, actually, uh, Lisa is looking after the details and we'll be coordinating uh, the expenditures with uh, Raymond. The Sandy Bay Steps are a big issue. Uh, it's a question how much and when. Uh, unfortunately, we've got three qualified uh, uh, contractors to take a look at it and make their recommendations on the report and do, of course, to counsel on that. The Pierpoint Toilet, one of our 22 municipal buildings. Uh, decided recently it's going to be, it needs to be closed for the season because there's no washing inside of it. And uh, uh, Raymond, I believe you were going to arrange to have it uh, uh, locked. Um, another municipal building is the uh, parking lot. Penny has been in a uh, uh, lengthy conversation with, um, with uh, Kevin. Uh, Kevin. The men, so like there, Kevin, of course. Um, <laughs> And uh, we agree that there's really nothing pressing uh, uh, within the building itself that needs to be uh, worried about. And uh, last but not least, my report serves to remind the council that we're going to have to make a policy decision sooner or later on that uh, dreadful eyesore of the former building inspector's office, but not today. That's my report. Thank you. Thanks, Graham. Thanks, I, Graham. I saw somebody with a ladder at the doctor's cottage yesterday. Was someone looking at the roof there, perhaps? Oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention that. Uh, okay. I'm just fulfilling the doctor's office. Uh, we're getting quotes to have it re roofed. Okay. It's decades old to be re roofed. Okay. I don't know what it's done. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Great. Thank you very much. Progress, um, progress. Yes. Dr. Irwin? I've had some uh, telephone conversation with Kathy McKibben. Uh, I was asking the question, when is our committee likely to meet? And obviously there's some challenges. Yeah. I think we're going to try and organize a telephone conference call. Um, Kathy reported to me that she has secured a commitment from at least one doctor to uh, provide services. Again, kind of, we're, it's difficult at this stage to, to be planning too far in advance because we really don't know whether we're going to have a doctor's office or not because of the, because of the COVID concerns yes yeah okay all right yeah, I, um so and i hope before the next meeting to have had a conversation uh, with the committee and and begin to formulate some plans okay, great thank you Erwin. um communications uh, Essentially, we're, we're waiting to hear back from Allnet and see what their latest and greatest version of our new website looks like. But we do have Facebook. That we do have a, a Facebook page, RM of Victoria Beach, not Rural Municipality of Victoria Beach. I found that one, and that one was last used in like 2010. And it's being, it has been. Uh, oh, it has been removed? Take, well, it might take, take a while, but they've requested that it be removed. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So again, uh, the the RM's official Facebook page is RM of Victoria Beach. And we have Connect. And we have Connect. Hope every, hopefully everybody's yeah. filling in your postcards. Right. And our e-news. So. Uh, I'd, I'd just like to um, also point out that uh, tomorrow, uh, myself and uh, possibly Mike or Graham, whoever can uh, uh, can come out with me, and definitely keep uh, our spacing from each other. Uh, we're also going to be putting uh, posters around the uh, RM. Uh, these posters are um, 
from uh, from provincial sources, but it's specifically to keep people uh, uh, away from each other as a reminder. Uh, there's three different uh, posters that are going to be going around. Um, each uh, each are going to have uh, different languages uh, that they're in: English, French, and then uh, two in Ojibwe. Uh, a couple. Uh, one of the posters is uh, what to do if you suspect that you have COVID and what what the exact signs are. Um, and so uh, I printed those off, and I'm hoping to put them up on the uh, bulletin boards because those those are um, that, as I said, that is directly from the province. Um, and then there's also uh, just a reminder of the uh, uh, the poster that we've uh, or the banner that we put up at the uh, uh, right at the entrance to the RM to try to remind people that uh, mm-hmm. you know, to keep your distance and, and follow COVID rules. Okay. Thanks some very people, much. Yeah. Some people may have seen the first wave of signs that Steve and I went about uh, stapling all over the municipality. So this is basically wave two. Wave two. <laughs> all right. Keeping everybody informed. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have nothing to report at the gate. Do you have anything for the gate? No. Okay. Building inspector. Graham. Uh, building inspector. Uh, Thanks once again to uh, Chris for uh, his timely submission of his report. Permits issued one main dwelling and one deck. Value of the permits, $455,800. Must have been one heck of a building. <laughs> the uh, revenues and fees collected, $2,610. Thank you. Thank you. Heck of a deck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, moving on to accessibility, I have no report. So heritage and trails, Steve? Uh, heritage, the only thing that's really come up aside from the, um, aside from the awards that we did, uh, discussed the, uh, the last time was uh, what we may or may not be able to do with those uh, three concrete uh, blocks at the uh, entrance to the uh, restricted area. And, and council obviously needs to have a mm-hmm. discussion about that, but um, there were a couple of ideas circulating uh, with trails. Uh, the biggest thing is just that we need to make a, a decision as to um, if we're going to keep them open during the summer. I know that we said that we that we're looking at doing that, but uh, there is the biggest question, which is what happens when two people are uh, walking right next to each other because those trails are only about three to four feet wide. Um, so I mean, I know that none of us want to shut them down, but it is a conversation that we do need to have. You can walk behind one another. Right. I mean, other trails in the province are still open, so that's that's where I'm getting my yeah. thoughts from. Yeah. I think it's still fairly wide enough that people can pass each other safely yeah. uh, without, uh, without coming into close proximity. Yeah. It's touch and go, but uh, we'll. Uh, we do. Yeah, just said is that when you're when you're walking when you're walking by somebody, I mean, one group. So are you, you, have, you have maybe somebody who's a little bit older, um, so you would let them buy, but uh, there are situations where it may, may put some people at risk depending on what the usage. I think we all have to, yeah, we'll think about that one, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Just a question on trail. Did we officially notify Transcanda Trails of the passage of that bylaw dealing with the trails? Yes. Yes, we did. Yeah. Long time Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion on reports? Uh, just one more thing yeah. from uh, Public Works. Um, for those who uh, who are nice enough to uh, stop and talk to me about garbage bins last uh, last Labor Day at the at the top of the parking lot as you're all rushing to your vehicles, uh, the first uh, 100 uh, bearproof bins are on their way. They will be here early next week. Uh, we're still coordinating how we're going to get them uh, to the folks. Uh, number one, the folks who had uh, voice and interest to me directly, I'll be contacting them very shortly. Um, and then uh, there w- then however many bins are left over will be available and I'll be communicating how we're going to uh, get uh, unite people with their new bear proof bins um, on the Facebook page and uh, also on the website. And we, once they arrive, we'll know exactly what they're going to cost because the shipping and everything will be included, correct? Yeah, they, they did hold the price on the bins themselves. Um, with, uh, with tax and with, with shipping, um, we're going to have to add that on as well as a, as a little bit of a pass along. So we're probably talking in the 200 to maybe 205 uh, or more maybe. I think it's a bit more. With with the 
with the transport, etc. I think it is a little higher, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see. Where you can put me on the list for one, please. There we go. Um, on reports, uh, just one head on for people who are interested in the accountability. Uh, we have received, and it's good to see, um, a uh, report from our animal control officer, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we expect that there will be a monthly reports uh, uh, from them, which uh, I think is uh, is worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, uh, uh, I just had uh, uh, two quick uh, additions. Uh, the first is just uh, about the connect, which Mike uh, referred to before, is that right now, just to remind everybody, it's also really important because it's about a, it's, it's the fastest way that we can get information out uh, to you directly. And so both uh, for COVID, uh, depending on whatever happens to it, uh, either in the first or second or third wave, um, then we'll be able to get the information out faster. Um, but also for a fire, it uh, will be able to target you specifically to remind, to tell you exactly what you do in an emergency. So it's very important that everybody um, uh, log on to this system. Um, and then I just I just had one uh, one quick reminder on uh, on FireSmart. Um, just going back to the fire report real quick, which is that if you do find yourself at your residence uh, right now, is a really great time to uh, be working on FireSmart because you can be working in your garden and enjoy yourself. And meanwhile, you're making your property safe. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Graham? Just a quick item. Um, on the uh, uh, alert, uh, people uh, signing up and uh, registering, uh, do we have any way of keeping track of how many people uh, are signed up or logged on? Yeah, the reason I ask is that so we can we can gauge our progress in uh, promoting it and encouraging people. Should be easy uh, enough to get those stats. Do we know how we're doing with that yet? Yeah. We, we don't at the moment, but we can find out, I guess. Or yeah. All right, I, I just, um, uh, unless I'm mistaken, I would think that knowing would help to guide us as to how more aggressive we might have right. to get in promoting it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good it point. is. It is a very important yeah. service. Yeah. And people need to, need to connect with Connect. There you go. It's important stuff. Okay. Thanks very much. All right. So be it resolved that the April committee reports be accepted as presented. I need a mover and a seconder. Mike's a mover. Uh, Graham's a seconder. Steve's a shaker. Steve's a shaker. Right. Any further discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Moving on down to accounts and finances, Erwin. I have reviewed the list of accounts and they all appear to be in order. There's nothing unusual and nothing exceptionally large. All right. I'll read the resolution. Be it resolved that the following list of accounts be approved for payment. Accounts payable checks 8255 to 8279 in the amount of $33,899.95 and April 17th payroll in the amount of $28,526.74. So would you like to move that, Erwin? Yes, I'd like to move that. And Thank perhaps you. someone could sign the forms on my behalf. Yes. And we need a seconders? I'll second. Okay, Mike seconding that. Any further discussion? Okay. No, well, not for me. All right, all those in favor? Carried, thank you. All right, we'll let Mike sign the document as we move on to other business. Bylaw 1606, the building bylaw, second and third reading. So be it resolved that bylaw 1606, being the building bylaw, be given second reading. May I have a mover and a seconder? Irwin's moving. Graham no, seconding. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Again, just for the record, the only change in 1606 relates to some change in permitting fees and inspection fees. There's no structural changes no. in the bylaw itself. Yeah. Correct. And uh, furthermore, that was uh, brought up and uh, dealt with as Erwin's explained uh, at first reading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? Steve, okay, thank you. All in favor? <laughs> Carried. 
Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Steve, sh kind of Steve is shaking his head. Use your right hand, Steve. Yeah, just, just for anybody watching, Steve is shaking his head no when the question is for discussion, not the vote. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next. I didn't if somebody's rocking his car. <laughs> <laughs> the wind. Be it resolved that bylaw 1606, being the building bylaw, be given third reading and passed. And this is a recorded vote. So in, uh, I need a mover and a seconder again, please. So moved. Mike's moving. We'll give Steve the second. Thank you. Any further discussion on third and final reading? I think we've discussed this I one. I think we have. Two, two great All ones. right. All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five. Carried. Thank you. Moving on to the 2020 information for residence card, which Council has all had a chance to review. Be it resolved, the arm yeah. of Victoria Beach Council approved the 2020 information for residence card. Mover and seconder. Mover, please. Steve. I'll move that. Oh, Steve beat you to it. Do you want a yeah. second it, Graham? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Discussion? There was one little change that I had suggested to, to Raymond that uh, he had no problem with, and uh, okay. the rest of it is... Very good. Uh, a couple of suggestions I had uh, that uh, discussed with Raymond and uh, they were in here. So the whole thing looks uh, good to go to me. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Moving on to bylaw 1607. General bylaw enforcement. Be it resolved that bylaw 1607 providing an administrative penalty scheme for general bylaw enforcement be given first reading. I need a mover and a seconder. So moved. Mike's moving, Irwin's seconding. Thank you. Any discussion? Graham, uh, pardon me, uh, Raymond, can you just give us a bit of background on this, please? Um, the, the only change to the bylaw is um, is the schedule and the reason the bylaw is being amended is because you just passed bylaw 1606 which is contained in the schedule uh, under the old bylaw number and that's the enforcement provision like if um, if there's a contravention of bylaw 1606 the building bylaw the new uh, enforcement uh, of general bylaws mm -hmm. bylaw will be the tool that we would use to enforce the fine so we have to keep changing it every time you change a bylaw because then the bylaw number changes even if you amend the bylaw you have to create a new bylaw to amend oh, it. so okay. regardless of how you do it you put a new bylaw number. so were there any changes in the uh, fines no there's no changes to any uh, any aspect of the bylaw it's the previous bylaw itself i think it was 1585 that's being amended yeah you're right 1585. And, uh, it's the exact same yeah. bylaw the only difference is in the schedule listing bylaw 1606 the building bylaw in place of the old i think it was 1597 previously yeah it was 1597 yeah. previously so that's why we have to change this bylaw on the Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Housekeeping, yes. Yeah. All right. And this is first reading. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? All carried. Thank you. Next up, bylaw 1608, which is our 2020 financial plan. Do you resolve the arm of. Oh, sorry, wrong one. I missed one. Yeah. The bill. Maybe it's just a little out of order. Let me look. I'm trying. Okay, here we go. Be it resolved that bylaw 1608, fixing the rate of taxation for the year 2020, be given first reading. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Irwin's moving. Oh, Steve got his hand up first. We're gonna give He's 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 ahead of the a curve, you see, because he doesn't want to miss. Get I think missed. he I think he's just signaling a turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any further discussion on bylaw 1608, which is our financial plan bylaw for 2020? Let's get it out there. Yeah. But I don't really have any 
question. I, I suppose the only thing is, should we just have like one more day to review it, just with everything that's changing? Well, we comment on that. I mean, it is it is a budget, and a budget is not totally written in stone. Uh, should circumstances change, uh, council has the, uh, the authority to approve additional uh, expenditures or revenue. True. It's a guideline. It's and it yeah. and it's first reading. It's, yeah, yeah. We're only giving it first. We're reading. only giving yeah, it. Of course, the first reading is uh, is uh, well, obviously part of that. Um, looks all right. Uh, um, but from here, we will then put it on the website so people can, not tomorrow. yet, not tomorrow, no, in, in yeah. a couple days. Yeah. And then we're going to go from there and try and organize a public hearing, correct? Well, some At some time. Public hearing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah as, as health issues uh, permit yeah. and in due course, uh, we get to second and third reading, but it'll be up there for. Uh, hopefully sometime tomorrow now that we're um you know, maybe it might review. not be up on the website until uh, we have to review first. thursday or friday yeah okay right I stand to be friday and for clarity the, the, the amount of tax increase is estimated at 2.3 percent which is you know very close to inflation and very reasonable mm -hmm. yeah and i just i just think that Given that, well, that even today we're saying that the golf course isn't going to be operating, and of course we have uh, all these different shutdowns that are happening all over the RM, it might be worth sitting down one more time and just, and I understand that it's not a solid document, I get that, but there are substantial changes that, uh, that are happening right now, and whether or not we can look at it and see if we're going to be over or below, or, um, you know, how this is going to affect it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's because of the uncertainty, uh, the, the likelihood of us losing revenue in some areas. That's one reason why there is a slight increase rather than a lesser or no increase. Don't forget, most of our revenues come from taxation. They don't come from no. The, our, the, uh, the golf course does not make us big bucks. Yeah, from our <laughs> operations, but still. But yeah. it, it, again, it's it's not it's not it's not my my question is not about uh, whether or not we're going to be uh, over budget, under budget, or anything along those lines. My 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 concern is just that we're passing this bylaw, yet uh, we don't have like so much has changed since since we last met with this. Um, so, so many things um, are no longer operating that we thought uh, were going to be and, and we're sort of going off of last year's and yeah we're tr trying to make some uh, accommodation but uh, things have changed so much that now that we've had that information is it not worth just getting together for uh, another sort of even four hour period and just going through and trying to break down a little bit more. I, that, I'm just, you know, okay. that, that's, that's, that's just my feeling because we have so much more information now. Just to comment on that, now that we have, for, if, we, if we do complete first reading, then we can put the bylaw up on the website, mm -hmm. and that will allow our, our constituents to Absolutely. take a look at what's being planned. And you know, then there's also the, the public hearing process, which likely won't be in public, but uh, th there's going to be lots of opportunities to make changes as things unfold. Right, as, yeah. as developments, uh, as we're able to use hindsight as we go along, should we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And you are allowed to recover a deficit in the following year because you can't possibly know uh, what's going to happen this year or any other year. So it's uh, just because you operate at a deficit doesn't preclude you from recovering it the following year or or uh, or writing it off to accumulated surplus. So you know, it's, uh, well, it is a you can examine this thing forever. Uh, we, we do our best to adhere to it. <laughs> But uh, as you know, uh, uh, we track uh, every line item, the extent to which we're over or under. And uh, very seldom do we come up right bang onto the penny on any one line item. We just use prudence and common sense as we go along. Okay. I think the most important thing is let's, let's get this information out to our constituents. And then that will allow them to provide feedback. Mm -hmm. you know, and that may in itself precipitate us getting together to have another look at it as well. Good comment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank as, you very much. As long as we're, as long as we're willing to sit back, sit back down and uh, just take another crack at it, given all this new information, then I'm more than fine with it. Okay. All right. I will call the question. All those in favor? 
first reading. Thank you very much. Carried. Um, what else is on my list? We had a couple additions here. Yep. All right. Be it resolved that the RM of Victoria Beach Council authorize purchase of radio equipment for the fire department as specified in Bell Quotation PSE 0242 at a total cost of $20,059.20. May I have a mover and a seconder? Irwin moving, Steve seconding. Thank you, gentlemen. And discussion. This is for part Again, for the record, you know, this was necessitated by a change at the, at the province's level and we're, we, we had no choice but to buy these radios because the old ones just weren't going to be supported any longer. Yeah. yeah. They couldn't it's repair them. It's not a hasty pressure purchase. We've discussed this at, at, at uh, quite some length. We've found uh, uh, the best possible deal and we have provided for this in the budget. Yeah. Did you, were you going to say something? You actually have 25000 budgeted right now, so it's well within the budget. Okay. The proposed yep. budget. Okay. Correct. And Brad is happy with this? I got this from, from Brad. Brad. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. And it's already ordered. Okay. I didn't want to hold back because of the 911. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that from me an AMM uh, trading partner? Or? Uh, yeah, Alcom is, yeah. Alcom, yeah, okay. Yeah, Alcom. Yeah. So one of the benefits of belonging to AMM. Yeah, there are some. Mm -hmm. All right, any further discussion, gentlemen? No? All right. All those in favor? You. This one's in. Thank you. Carried. And... Sorry. No, I have one more resolution. Oh. Right. Um, I ask that this be put on the agenda. Uh, whereas council meetings are presently closed to public attendance due to the COVID-19 pandemic, be it resolved, the arm of Victoria Beach Council agree to schedule all future meetings to begin at 1 p.m. until such time as restrictions are relaxed, enabling the public to attend in person. May I have a mover? Mike? Mm -hmm. Seconder? Irwin? Uh, discussion? Mike? I think it's a great idea uh, for those that are attending in Winnipeg or, or, or people that are traveling to attend. Uh, from a safety point of view, I think it's a it's a great idea. Um, and also, if we have the meeting earlier, because of the jury rigged way that we are presenting these meetings, uh, there's no possible way to live stream them. So holding them earlier actually gives us the opportunity to get them uh, up mm. and viewable uh, earlier. In, yeah. You know, the same day as opposed to the following well, morning. Maybe. It makes it makes sense to me and this will presumably uh, apply to the first reading meeting of May um, until further notice. Well and my thought was until until COVID nineteen relaxes enough so that the public can attend the meetings. Mm -hmm. Um, it's you know we don't have to worry about keeping our staff late. We don't have to come into the office at six yeah. thirty. Um, and I think, Steve, your schedule is better now. I'm free. <laughs> uh, hopefully, not not too long foreseeable future. I'm fine with this. But my my only issue is that uh, hopefully in, in three or four months, when uh, uh, when one of the uh, one one of the schools out here decides to bring me on, then I'm not sure that I'll be able to do one o'clock meetings. But, right. but I mean, we can we can readdress we'll, that. We'll we'll yeah. reevaluate that because if the school is open, they yeah. need you. That's probably yeah. going to mean that the general social distancing has been relaxed to the extent where we can again start having the general public attend the meetings. Right. So we'd yeah. be back to evenings okay. anyway. Uh, we'll still be going to be going on. I mean, I, I'm still I'm still working with uh, uh, with the school that I was working with before online, and, it, and it, it's taking up a good eight hours of my day. So wow. uh, the in person or not in person it's still a substantial amount of time so is this if we change it to one o'clock for until COVID is finished whenever that may be uh are you okay for the next little while do you think i'm, I'm, I'm okay for the, the next three months at least okay okay um, okay we might have to readjust it later on okay, okay. and sure. Erwin, how does this work for you uh, I, my internet is, should be up and running uh, before the next meeting, so um, unfortunately th today it, it wasn't possible. Erwin, does one o'clock work for you going f forward? That's fine. Okay. 
Okay. And Graham, you're all right with that? Yes, I'm okay with one o'clock. Thank you. Okay. Join from the boat. There we go. Good for you. Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you very much. I forgot about that one. Yeah. All right. Now, where am I? Moving on to correspondence. Anything in correspondence? Pretty quiet, isn't it? These days. Yeah, um, we were saying that you wanted to uh, speak to uh, uh, quite a coherent one that we received from uh, Victoria Beach Cottage Owners Association. No. Um, no, they only sent, they sent something out to all their members. Um, yeah. yeah. Just presenting Victoria Beach information, so that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah, it, well, I was going to say it, it, it's, been, it's been pretty quiet. We haven't really seen yeah. it, I've received too too much, which I hope is a good sign. Um, other, other than just concerns with uh, how uh, how the summer is going to work out, um, my only question though is that if we could, and I'm not sure how this would work, so I'm just putting it out there, is that when we're getting around this time, just for us, if we could have possibly some delegations mm -hmm. by conference call, I have no idea if that could possibly work, but yeah, it, I think it's something that we should look into because I don't like the idea of not receiving these questions because um, usually we would have some during the during the meeting so I'm just hoping that people are still feel for, still feeling free to be able to, to communicate with us well now that we've got this set up perhaps we can have a delegation via this facility I guess we'd have to invite them to the meeting I don't know they would have to be one person delegations one person delegation yeah yeah, one more uh, sign-in, uh, sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll look into it because uh, I, I was able to, to reach out to GoToMeeting, which is why we can uh, record this meeting right now. Um, and so I already have all the information I need from them. So I should be able to get, get in touch with them pretty quickly to figure out whether or not we could set something like that up. Okay, great. Thank you. Would it just be a matter of adding an extra person onto the conference call? I think so. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Pretty simple. Yeah. Just, yeah, it's just yeah. I, I don't think that we want somebody who can uh, keep coming in and in, in, in and out uh, for the meeting. Oh, I see it, it, I believe you can uninvite them. Or receive. Well, you can ask them to leave. I'm it's pretty sure the administrator could block them. It's only by invitation. Every, yeah. every meeting is different. We set up the emails. Yeah. But, can but if somebody uses the same link for the same meeting, if they come back and forth, coming in and out, in oh. and out. Oh, I, see. I believe as the administrator, you okay. can control that. Okay. Yeah, he has the hook for anybody. Who's I would think seen. so. I would certainly think so, yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else in correspondence? Just uh, uh, you know, uh, since we since we started up the, uh, the RM of Victoria Beach uh, Facebook page, uh, I want to thank the folks uh, for the questions that they have been sending thus far. They've been tremendous questions. Oh, good. And, uh, and I hope uh, the speed with which we're able to get back to them and the quality of the answers that we're giving them and they're sharing those answers with everybody else uh, is, uh, is getting everybody the right information in the right amount of time. So you're not answering it's those on the Facebook page though? You're sending a separate yeah, That's right. Thanks largely to uh, Mike for that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Seeing nothing else on the agenda. Our next meeting is Tuesday, May the 5th. Oh, par yeah, wow. <laughs> so be it resolved that the April 21st, 2020 regular council meeting be adjourned. Next regular council meeting to be held on May the 5th, 2020 at 1 p.m. In, in these offices for those of us who are attending. And may this be the last snow we see oh, for a long yeah. time. So I need a mover and a seconder, please. Looks Irwin's like moving. Irwin's moved. I'll second. Mike is seconding. All those in favor. Go I was just going to say all those in favor. Would you like to say something? <laughs> yeah, he's in favor. <laughs> Carried. You yes, I just hope someone talks to the weather band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's no, no discussion of the jury, please. Okay. okay. That is it, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thanks, folks. Steve, drive safely. Oh, no.